Part 6, May June 2015, Paper 12. Question 31. Which unit is not used in either the definition of the coulomb or the definition of volt? So we should choose one of the option in which we are not using uh, to define the unit that we are not using to define coulomb or volt. As you know, coulomb is the SI unit of charge and charge is equal to current into time. Current is ampere, time is in second. So option A, ampere, and option D, second, is used to define coulomb. Volt is a unit of potential difference or uh, EMF. That is nothing but the energy per unit charge. Energy is in joule per charge, that is per coulomb. So joule is given in option B. So we are using option B to define volt. We are not using option C, ohm. Ohm is the unit of resistance. In both the cases, we are not using resistance or the unit ohm to define coulomb or volt. So the option is C. Question 32. When a thin metal wire is stretched, it becomes longer and thinner. This causes a change in the resistance of the wire. The length of the wire remains constant. Which graph could represent the variation with extension of the wire R of the wire? Now we know the resistance increases with length and it decreases with the increase in area. So that's what we have. Resistance is equal to resistivity into length over A. But here they have mentioned the volume of the wire is kept constant. So volume is equal to cross section A into the length L. Now, we don't have this equation in terms of volume, so I'm multiplying both the sides by L. So, rho L into L, that gives you rho L square. Area into L, that gives me volume. So, I'm getting it in terms of volume. Okay, now, since V and rho are constant, why? Because they have mentioned volume is constant, also resistivity is a constant we get resistance is equal to constant into L square. Or we can say resistance is directly proportional to L square. So this is an equation of parabola facing upwards. And also you know that at zero extension, we still have some resistance. Therefore, the graph will not start from the origin. So it should be a parabola facing upwards and it should not start with the origin. So as you can see, the answer should be option A. Question 33, which statement is not valid? Option A, current is the speed of the charge particles that carrying it. Okay, now the real definition of current, current is the flow of charge. It's not the speed of charge. Option B, electromotive force is the energy converted to electrical energy from other forms per unit charge. So EMF is the energy converted from other form to electrical divided by per charge. Potential difference is between two point is the work done per unit charge when moving charge from one point to other. So when uh, it's moving from one point to other, electrical energy is converted to other form per unit charge. The resistance between two points is the PD per unit current. PD per unit current. That is coming, this equation is coming from the Ohm's law. So which statement is not valid? Not valid, the first statement. Why they are saying current is the speed of charge, whereas current is the flow rate of flow of charge. Therefore, the option is A. Question 33. A cell of EMF E delivers a charge Q to the external circuit. Which statement is correct? Now look at this circuit. We have a battery, a cell, a cell of EMF E. Also, it has an internal resistance of R whose lost voltage is given as VR. 
and externally there is a load resistance whose uh, potential difference across it is capital V R. Now option A, we need to choose which statement is correct. So in that from option A, the energy dissipated in the external circuit is EQ, which is incorrect because some of the energy is being lost in the internal resistor. So already you know the EMF is equal to terminal PD plus lost volt. So E is equal to VR, that is the terminal PD plus lost PD. So option A is incorrect. The energy dissipated in the external circuit is going to be the terminal PD, which is VR. So terminal PD, the energy for the terminal PD is, energy is V into Q, that means PD into Q, the charge. So VR into Q. The energy dissipated within the cell is EQ. So within the cell means we have to consider about the internal resistance. So the lost volts energy is VRQ. The external resistance is EQ. No, the external resistance is the potential dif difference across the load resistor divided by the circuit current. This equation comes from the Ohm's law. The total energy dissipated in the cell and the external circuit is EQ. So the total PD is VR plus VQ that gives you EM, EMF E. So EMF E into Q, that is the total energy dissipated in the cell and the external circuit. So the correct answer is option D. Question 35. Each Kerhaf's two laws presumes that some quantity is conserved. Which row states Kerhaf's first law and names the quantity that is conserved? So Kerhaf's first law states that the sum of the current entering a junction in a circuit is always equal to the sum of the current leaving. That means if you consider one point, the current entering that point is equal to the current leaving the point. So it's current. Current means it's talking about the conservation of charge. Similarly, if you talk about Kirchhoff's second law, the sum of the electromotive forces in a closed circuit is equal to the sum of the potential difference. That means the, the potential difference given by the source is equal to the potential difference uh, received by every single point in a circuit. So this is basically electromotive force and potential difference talks about the energy. So the, this law originates from the conservation of energy. Now we have to choose for Kirchhoff's first law. So Kirchhoff's first law talks about the conservation of charge. So the answer is either A or C. Now the algebraic sum of the current into a junction is zero. That means if you sum up the current entering and current leaving the junction, the overall current in a junction, the algebraic sum is considered to be zero. So in that case, we can consider the current coming towards the junction as positive, the current leaving the junction as negative. So when you sum them up, the algebraic sum will be zero. So, and it also talks about the conservation of charge. So the option is, a. 